All right, so guys, Jeff here. Today's Thursday. And all right, so earlier today, or early in the morning before I uh, fell asleep at about 5 a.m., I actually went through the entire Tesla earning and I love Tesla's earning for this quarter. I'm very, very surprised by a lot of this number, which I'm going to be going through uh, um, the whole entire earnings with you guys as well. Um, because yesterday, after I was done with the whole report, it was about 5 a.m. or so. Uh, and I thought that, you know, I'll just do it for the news instead of me just recording it because. I had an early morning for work. But anyway, today I'll be going through the Tesla report. And of course, then afterwards, I'll just go through um, all the other news that we have lined up today. But anyway, let's start with the earning report. So let's go from this way. But anyway, all right, let's move over to this. Okay, so super duper crazy. Okay, first start, we have to look at the operating income, $3.6 billion for the gap operating income. Okay, operating margin was at... 19.2%. Now, let's get into the, the numbers here, okay, which is super duper crazy. I like to compare it to the previous quarter and also uh, compare it to the previous uh, year over year as well. Automotive gross margin, 32.9%. 32.9%, okay. You, you, you have to understand what this actually means for Tesla, okay? I think back in uh, 2018 or 2019, I think um, when Elon was talking about how automotive um, gross margin was uh, going to hit 30%, nobody actually uh, believed in him because it was kind of like a myth. Okay, you check with Ford, you check with General Motors, none of them were doing that kind of numbers for the gross margin of it. For them to hit 30% was actually very, very hard. Okay, and do understand that because this is also inclusive, inclusive of credits okay later on we'll actually get into the uh, nitty-gritty of things okay super duper interesting so over here 32.9 percent ridiculously good okay as compared to what we had last year okay it was 26.5 percent which is almost a six percent increment okay our 636 basis point increment amazing okay profits is also up clearly because if your gross margin is up your profit is usually going to be going up as well okay very, very interesting stuff. Operating margin going up year over year by 1,349 basis point increment, which is amazing. Amazing. For operating margin, it simply means that they have a lot of money for them to currently uh, do whatever they want, basically. Okay. The uh, uh, the EBITDA margin at 26.8%. Uh, I thought that this was a very, very healthy increase as well uh, because they have always been doing a small increment of like 3% or so. However, we did have a little bit of a uh, dimmer down on the quarter four. Of course, though, that was also the reason why, you know, Tesla didn't really move much from the previous quarter. So I'm very, very happy to see the EBITDA uh, margin go up as well. Okay. Cash flow. Looking at the cash flow, of course, is, uh, it, oh, oh, first of all, uh, I see that the cash flow is down a little bit, but, you know, year over year, the cash flow is up by a lot. But of course, we also have to take into consideration that Giga Berlin and Giga Shanghai is also up and running as well. So those are things that we have to also take into account. Okay, so, you know, for cash flow wise, ultimately for their cash flow to still be at that high, and let's not forget that they also have cash and cash equivalent at still around 17.5 million or so. Uh, I think this is about, no, 17.5 billion dollars, my bad, 17.5 billion dollars. So yeah, pretty good. All right, now let's talk about revenue, okay? High growth in vehicle deliveries, Increase average selling price, ASP. This is super duper important. If you ask me in terms of any any form of like any business at all, your ASP should constantly go up simply because first things first, you have to beat inflation, especially if we are, you know, going through a hyperinflated economy. If you cannot even increase your ASP, chances are you're going to get destroyed by your own market. Okay, so I'm very, very happy to see that they, you know, have been increasing their ASP. And afterwards, you know, growth in other parts of the business. Okay, and in other parts of the business, you have to talk about the batteries, you have to talk about the charges, you have to talk about, you know, factories, the manufacturing and such. Very, very interesting. All right, so let's get into the numbers for the operational summary. Okay, total production, total production. Okay, Q1 of 2022, they are actually on par with uh, Q4, which is considered a beat on expectation, okay? Because first of all, we have already taken into consideration that Giga Shanghai went through a lockdown and then afterwards went into a closed loop um, working system where they basically have their uh, workers never knock off and just stay in the uh, factory itself. So of course, there was a lot of supply chain issues, especially after what Rivian CEO actually said 
uh, you know, saying that, you know, batteries are definitely going to be a huge problem. And we also see that happening for NIO. We see that happening for Ford. We see that happening for General Motors as well. So, of course, evidently, we thought that, you know, Tesla would be going through the same issues. But clearly not, okay? Tesla is going above and beyond. We were expecting um, Q1 deliveries uh, well, from production. We we're expecting it to be about 300,000, um, right? Right now, they're reporting 305,000, which is very, very good, okay? Total deliveries hitting 310, which is even higher than the previous quarter, which is mind-blown, okay? I'm, I'm completely mind-blown because if you take into consideration that we're going through supply chain issues and they're still delivering more than previous quarter, man. And of course, you know, we can also um, kind of say it's due to Giga Berlin and also Giga Shanghai, uh, which of course, that's, that's the whole point of it, okay? We want to see uh, a constant increment in terms of the deliver, uh, deliveries. So amazing, amazing, okay? Global vehicle uh, inventory days of supply uh, dropped down by three, which is um, a good thing, okay? Because if we actually see a lower inventory of vehicle, it simply means that the demand for the vehicle is high enough for it to keep on going out. It means that more and more people want Tesla. Uh, but of course, this do uh, acts as a double-edged sword because you know the more people want the demand, and if the slower your supply, it kind of works in both way. Because if demand stays the same as supply goes down, it's the same thing. The days of supply will also go down. Uh, but evidently, we, we do think that it is due to um, a low, uh, a, a higher demand than a lower supply because obviously, uh, if we take into consideration that the production and the deliveries are also higher than the previous quarter, I'm almost certain that we are doing great as the company itself. All right, so something that is a little bit concerning, which would be the solar deployed uh, over on this side. So you can see that solar deployed, they're, they're actually been going down a little bit um, year over year they are at the start. Uh, Q1 of 2021, they're doing 92. Right now, they're down about half, almost 50% uh, down to about 48. So uh, I'm not sure what's actually happening there. Maybe it's just uh, lesser on the solar um, R&D happening. Uh, there's a good chance that they're actually moving towards uh, electrifying. I do think that um, Elon Musk is also trying to tap into uh, nuclear a little bit. So there is a good possibility that he, they're staying away from uh, solar for a little bit. But we have to really see uh, what is going to be happening. I did not really go through with the whole Tesla call, so I'm not sure if they actually touched on this topic because I do think that this is um, a pretty important point uh, if, you're, uh, if you're, you know, invested in the company to begin with, okay? Supercharger station and um, the connectors went up as expected. Uh, we weren't really expecting them to really go down with this. Uh, let's see, vehicle capacity... Uh, something interesting, yeah, for um, the Giga Berlin, uh, they're still using the uh, 2170s, uh, whereas we thought that uh, they would already be using the 4680s. Uh, but uh, yeah, well, over here, they did say that ultimately Gigafactory Berlin uh, will be able to produce model-wise using both structural packs with uh, 4680s and also uh, 2170s. Because I think the 2170s are the uh, lithium iron uh, phosphate batteries, and then for the 4680s is the upgraded one. So yeah, pretty interesting. Uh, let's see, FSD. FSD is crazy because, okay, uh, continue to work on the reducing and disengagement, particularly uh, focusing on unprotected left turns and smoothness of the right through reduction of slowdown turns. So, of course, you know, FSD is still at the beta. Um, and the good thing is that over here, initial release of FSD beta to some customers in Canada started in March of 2022. So, for FSD, uh, from what I do understand for FSD beta, uh, it actually includes uh, the CP driving. Um, whereas the previous enhanced autopilot uh, basically did whatever FSD uh, did, just uh, taking away the whole CD driving. So CD driving is the one of the most important one, basically where people do most of the driving, uh, basically is within the city itself. Uh, and it's only for, um, I think it was in uh, LA and California. Um, so right now, they're actually extending the FSD beta out to Canada as well. So that's going to be very interesting because, you know, in due time, most likely FSD is going to be taking over the whole entire world. And that's one of the reasons why I think that Tesla is a, such a good company. Because Tesla is not just a, an automobile company. Okay, They don't just sell cars. They sell data. Okay, They are mapping 
every single part of the world. The more people drive their car, the more they're mapping out the, the whole entire the whole entire world. Okay, it's not just with LiDAR tech anymore. Right now, Tesla is also getting into uh, photography tech where they actually look at the picture itself, not just uh, using uh, LiDAR. So I thought that that was very, very interesting. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I would think that, you know, uh, FSD, if we actually get out of the beta version, I would l like to imagine that, you know, it will most likely be about 2026, 2027. Of course, uh, Elon Musk did say that by 2025, we're gonna, he's going to achieve uh, level six autonomy. Uh, but of course, I do think that he liked to uh, kind of underestimate, uh, well, kind of overestimate his own capability. And then afterwards, he just kind of do better um, overall. Uh, so yeah, I do think 27, 28, 29, I think in that spectrum of time, we would most likely be seeing FSD or at least the dreams of what FSD would truly mean to us, which is level six autonomy. Okay, so very, very interesting stuff. Afterwards, they're talking about energy storage. But okay, I want to get into the financials because I do think that the financials is the most important. Oh, this is the Giga Berlin. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I do want to look at the, the financials. Okay, financials. Great. Okay, so financials, automobiles, uh, sales, okay, you know, sales going up. Cool. Okay, what I do want to show you guys, okay, what I do want to show you guys is something very, very important, okay, which is over here. Automotive gross margin excluding regulatory credit sales non-gap, okay, non-gap. 30%. 30%. Okay, like I said before, okay, for Tesla to hit 30% excluding regulatory credit sales, X regulatory credit sales. This is crazy for the gross margin. Okay, this is the first time. This is the first time we hit um, a a three for the tens place. Okay, which is why this is super duper bullish for Tesla, which is quite evident because you can see that Tesla, uh, Tesla is that uh, well up uh, seven percent in the pre market. So I'm very very happy to see Tesla going up. Uh, of course, you know I did not manage to cop more Tesla uh, during the down market, uh, but yeah, you know I'm very very happy to see that you know this is one of the uh, reason why Tesla is still so good. Okay, um, in terms of the cash flow and such, I think that it's very, very normal. Uh, I think for a trillion capper, they have really been um, doing well for the um, monetary uh, balancing and such. So I don't think that it would be that big of an issue. But okay, with Tesla's earning out of the way, pretty good. Okay, but let's talk about something that happened yesterday, which is the bad earning that happened yesterday. And I think that we all know what we're talking about, which is Netflix. Netflix stock price dropped 35%. And let's be honest, it wasn't 35% because at one point, it was actually down 40%, okay? Posting biggest fall since uh, 2004, okay? And I think that we all know about this uh, situation with Netflix, which I already spoke of about yesterday as well. And I think that uh, what Tesla actually did um, for the market uh, yesterday, uh, post, um, post hours, is that basically... Tesla kind of saved the market a little bit, uh, but I do think that because Tesla is kind of in their own industry on, the, on their own, so I don't think that uh, Tesla is considered as a tech company, which is why they, Tesla is not in a uh, part of FANG, okay? So I do think that we need to put FANG together in a group and really see what FANG actually does. Okay, yesterday on Instagram, I actually posted um, a story basically talking about all the pandemic darlings down, okay? Facebook was down, Roblox was down, Okay, um, you got DocuSign down, you got PayPal down, you got Shopify down, you got Spotify down. Anything that had to do with staying at home, Peloton, everything was down. And it, and all of them were down 6, 7, 8, 9, 40%. It was kind of crazy. So, of course, uh, because of what Netflix actually uh, went through, uh, it kind of brings forth a, an idea that, you know, maybe people are really getting out of the entire uh, pandemic darlings and such. Uh, of course, I'm quite happy Okay, uh, of course, I do not want to be happy uh, because I'm not bearish or anything, but I did have bearish um, positions against all these kind of things. So, for example, I did have bearish position on my um, Snapchat. Okay, Snapchat, I'm a big, big investor in Snapchat in terms of my own portfolio, of course. Um, I did, but I did sell calls on Snapchat. Okay, those were actually doing great. Uh, I made back a lot of money from that, that way of me hedging my position. Um, I also... Um, so calls on Lemonade, which also went down. So of course, those definitely made me a little bit of money as well. Okay, I sold uh, calls on SoFi, which I have quite a number of shares as well. 
And of course, that also went up. A lot of these are so-called the pandemic darlings and also considered as growth stock, tech stocks and all, all those. They kind of just group them in a bunch. Netflix falls after showing a negative um, increase in um, subscriber count. Of course, that's going to scare off a little bit of people because people in the market basically uh, trusted that Netflix is going to be this uh, stable company that will not lose subscribers, okay? Because in the past more than a decade, okay, more than 10 years, Netflix have constantly been going up and up and up and up. And even if when they were going down, when they're on their way down from 700 highs, okay, they did not go through something so bad. When they were going down from 700 highs, even when they were at $500, $500 per share, they did not show loss of subscribers. So, of course, uh, that's definitely going to be scaring a lot of investors, not even just in Netflix, in FANG, in growth stock, in tech stocks and such. So, of course, that's going to be very, very scary for people in the market. Okay, so uh, something that we do want to talk a little bit about for this uh, is, do we have it here? Uh, yeah, Bill Eggman. Okay, so Bill Ackman, funny story. For Bill Ackman, uh, in January, he bought a lot of Netflix stocks, okay? He, he said that, you know, this is a very, very attractive uh, valuation. I think he bought it at about uh, $400 or so for Netflix, I think. No, he bought, I think, $300 plus. Uh, and, you know, of course, uh, it kind of went up a little bit. And he said that, you know, uh, it's good that we think that Netflix is at this valuation. It's going to be a good value play for them. Um, of course, yesterday, uh, after it kind of just dropped down, um, the price of uh, Netflix went to 226. Well, right now it's 223, which is a bit worse. <laughs> so, uh, the price went down to uh, 226. And Bill Eichmann basically, his whole fund sold off all the shares. I think it was about a few millions of um, shares. Uh, and he cashed out um, $400 million of loss. So, uh, pretty crazy. Um, to see a hedge fund lose so much money for, from this trade alone. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, over here, you know, he wrote, we have lost confidence in our ability to predict the company's future prospect. Well, clearly, you know, um, especially when Netflix forecast is also saying that for the next quarter, they will most likely be losing even more um, subscriber. That's going to be even more scary for the whole entire um, streaming platform in general. Okay. Like, is you know when Netflix posted a bad uh, when Netflix posted a bad quarter, okay, Netflix was the one the only one that had to suffer through the whole thing, okay. Disney had to go through the whole thing. Roku have to go through the whole thing. So I do think that this is uh, kind of like a shed kind of thing, okay. Like even for Discovery as well, okay. Paramount, Paramount went down eight point six percent. Warner Bros went down six percent. Walt Disney went down five point six percent. Spotify went down eleven percent. So yeah, you can you can tell you can tell you can tell that a lot of people were getting hurt from this one Netflix report, which is why I said uh, in one of my video I'm gonna put it in the card uh, in somewhere here up here, okay? Where basically I told you guys that this earnings season is going to be well, and Netflix is going to kind of give us the foreshadow of what's going to be happening for this entire earnings season. But of course, Tesla is um, a slightly di different stock from what we're actually talking about here. And you know, if we look at meta platforms, Facebook, okay? Facebook was down 7.77% 7 .7 yesterday. Right now, it's up by almost a percent in the pre-market. But like I said before, I don't think that uh, they are going to definitely... I, I don't think that Facebook is going to be um, shielded uh, from a bad um, earnings either, okay? Nothing, nothing super duper great about Facebook uh, in the past quarter. I don't see um, anything to add on to what Facebook can actually do. Uh, Instagram is not necessarily doing far better than TikTok, okay? And uh, I, I don't think that, you know, Facebook is going to uh, really show any impressive numbers for this quarter. Uh, but of course, I'm not going to be on a... I'm not going to the point to, uh, where I'm actually shorting Facebook either. Um, if I were to short Facebook, most of the time it's going to be a very, very short play where I'm in it for like two, three hours and I'm gonna just going to get out. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be shorting and then staying in the position overnight and such because I do think that that's a very, very dangerous move. Uh, same thing, you know, about financial advice. If you think that's safe, go for it. I don't know. Okay. Uh, but yeah, so I do think that uh, Facebook is going to be very interesting for us to really look at, okay, for them to actually be down almost 8% yesterday, uh, intraday. And then, um, you know, right now, they're still hovering about $200 or so. Uh, for Facebook, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, their all-time high was near $400 or so. Uh, yeah, their all-time high was uh, $384. Uh, so yeah, for them to actually go down all the way to $200, 
almost a 50% drop. But of course, nothing compared to what uh, Netflix actually went through. Okay, for someone who's actually inside S&P 500, for them to drop like what, 70% from their all-time high? Man, horrible. All right, so anyway, uh, let's move on to the next news. I don't want to make this too long. Uh, yeah, Tesla uh, posts their 3.3 billion quarterly profit. Really, really good. I explained the whole thing for you guys already, the whole 10 miles. All right, Twitter, Jack Dorsey Japs. Uh, the board as Elon Musk proposes a takeover. I think uh, I talked about this a little bit on uh, my Instagram as well, uh, which is basically, you know, Jack Dorsey is kind of just telling uh, telling um, the board, basically, you know, like they're all just people who don't really care about the company. Okay, if you add up the entire board, okay, the amount of shares that they have is like less, less than 3%. And the only reason why it's less than 3% is because Jack Dorsey owns 2%, like 2.3%. None of them owns 1%, none of them, other than Jack Dorsey's side. Uh, so, yeah, which is why, you know, Elon Musk is also talking about how, you know, if he were to actually buy over Twitter, the board of directors, all of them are going to get fired. All of them. Just get, get them away. Uh, so, yeah, that's going to be crazy. Uh, I thought that it was just a pretty fun update uh, and a bit. All right. So, over here, <laughs> the Ackman losing more than $430 million on a three-month Netflix bet. Uh, but of course, yeah, they, they sold 3.1 million plus Netflix share. Uh, so yeah, yeah a, 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 little, a little bit of um, an ouchie dauchi. All right, so next up, let's talk about um, a little bit more about uh, Russia and Ukraine. Um, there's going to be another news, but let's just uh, get get into this a little bit. Uh, let me just close off. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so Binance limits uh, Russia's services after EU sanctions on crypto. Okay, Binance, we, we all know that Binance is the biggest um, cryptocurrency exchange in the world right now, okay? Um, and, you know, they are currently going to be limiting services in Russia. And this is a huge thing, okay? This is a huge thing because, first of all, we understand that because of the whole Russia-Ukraine situation, people are starting to look at cryptocurrency as a viable form of transaction, uh, be it, you know, passing over store of value, be it using it as a form of transaction, or be it just using it as any sort of currency at all, okay? But if Binance is actually starting to limit Russia's services for crypto, that's going to be a little bit of a weird form of sanctions against uh, Russia. And this is not even going to be uh, given out by a country. This is going to be given out by a country, uh, well, by a company, which is a quite odd uh, for a way of sanctioning. One of the biggest market following the European Union's latest tr sanctions on Moscow. Okay, so they are going to be, re re they will reduce its uh, offering for uh, Russian individuals or entities based there who have crypto assets exceeding the value of 10,000 euros, the company said in the blog, uh, blog post, confirming an earlier Bloomberg report. So of course, I do understand that, you know, um, this is going to be a very, very gray line because for cryptocurrency, you know, you're supposed to be decentralized. You're not supposed to be looking at whatever countries, you know, be it who, whoever who is at fault, uh, not at fault, in at war, not at war, whatever it is. I do think that, um, you know, cryptocurrency, the whole point of the cryptocurrency is for decentralized finance. Okay. And for Binance to actually step into this, uh, I do think that uh, it's more than just because uh, they are trying to uh, stand the ground against Russia. I don't think that's uh, the only case. Uh, over here, they are talking about how, you know, for crypto assets exceeding the value of 10,000 uh, euros, uh, they will not be uh, allowing them to do any more of the, uh, of like the transactions and such. I do think that this is more on the, on the side of them actually doing it for safer reasons. Because, for example, if they start to siphon a huge amount of transaction uh, via cryptocurrency, then, you know, eventually this might actually turn around on Binance, you know. There's going to be a lot of senators who are actually looking at Binance, looking at all the other Coinbase, looking at uh, Kraken, looking at Gemini, uh, looking at KuCoin. All of them, they're just basically looking at all the uh, exchanges and also all the DEXs and such. And saying that, you know, what are you guys doing? Are you guys actually helping with the Russian war and such? So, of course, those are going to be the main concerns in all these exchanges' minds as well. So, I do think that what Binance is basically doing is kind of like what Robin Hood was doing back then uh, in January of 2021. Basically, just covering their ass a little bit. Uh, make sure that, you know, uh, if anything were to happen uh, in the crypto space, um, you know, due to any geopolitical tensions and such, not nothing to do with Binance and such. So I do think that uh, it is uh, a viable way of doing uh, doing it. So I, I do think that, that 
that kind of makes sense for them as well. All right, so Russia is one of Binance top five market globally with about 10 million total accounts. Two people familiar with the matter said it's estimated that fewer than 50,000 actually hold a value exceeding 10,000 euros, one of the person said. All right, so uh, yeah, you know, you can tell that there are a lot of people in Russia who is actually using uh, cryptocurrency. So I think that this is definitely going to be a little bit uh, of a, uh, a, I would consider this uh, a form of sanction if this actually goes through. Okay, so all right, next up, this is one of the most important one. Like, uh, we're back to the geopolitical tension stuff again. All right, so Putin says Maripol is now under Russian control. Uh, this actually came out, I think, uh, uh, about an hour ago. Um, so yeah, you know, Russia has liberated uh, Ukraine's Maripol, apart from its massive uh, Azov Star steel plant, which he ordered uh, blockaded, not stormed. Uh, Kiev has called for urgent talks to save the lives of the fighters and civilian in Maripol. Limited civilian evacuations went ahead Wednesday and will continue. Uh, so President uh, Vladimir Zelensky said in his uh, address to the nation on Wednesday night as Russian forces pushes on with stepped up offenses. <sighs> Man. All right. So, um, you know, right now, uh, the defense minister for uh, Russia, actually, uh, they came out to talk about this as well. Um, however, you know, Putin just basically just came out to say, Putin himself actually just came out to say that, you know, uh, Russia has liberated the uh, southern city of Maripol. And, you know, the defense minister basically just said, you know, I think 2,000 uh, Ukrainian troops uh, remain. Okay, wait, let's see. Uh, yeah, okay, it's over here. Okay, yeah. Uh, 2,000 Ukrainian troops remain uh, holed up in a uh, massive steel plant there. Uh, taking control of such an important center in the south as Maripol is a success. Uh, Putin told uh, Defense Minister Sergei uh, Shoigu uh, in a televised meeting. Uh, so yeah, so that even a fly can't get through um, the steel uh, the steel plant. He demanded that the remaining Ukrainian troops surrender. Uh, so yeah, of course this is gonna be a huge uh, victory for Putin uh, because if they actually got um, Maripol, it's a huge part of um, this whole fight. Uh, which is why they actually started shelling Maripol to begin with. Uh, of course, they are trying to get the um, eastern Donbass area, uh, but of course, getting Maripol is the southern side of things. So eventually, they are going to be liberating uh, the eastern and southern part. I think it's this part of uh, Ukraine. So yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a little bit uh, tougher for us to really uh, get into it. So we'll see if there there's any changes uh, in the upcoming um, few hours or so. Uh, and then if there are something worth updating, it will most likely be in the menus anyway. So um, looking at oil prices, uh, let's see if I can get oil prices up here. Uh, let's see, can I get Business Insider? Uh, yeah, okay, so oil prices at the moment, uh, it's not really spiking either. Uh, so I don't think that that is something that we have to worry as of now, I think that that's, that's still fine. It's currently at 103, which is around the same price as what it was uh, yesterday as well. Uh, looking at Oxy, Occidental Petroleum right now, prices are not really moving in the pre-market either. So uh, I don't think that there is much going on for oil prices as of now. Um, but yeah, you know, uh, we'll see how it actually go in terms of oil prices for that. All right, now. Let's move on from depressing news. Uh, Apple spends a record high on lobbying amid pressure from uh, Congress. Uh, so I think that uh, Apple is definitely going to be an important um, earnings for us to look at as well. Uh, actually, I do not know when is Apple going to be reporting. Um... Oh, okay, they are going to be reporting on the 28. Okay, so uh, if Apple is going to report on the 28, I think that's going to be an important one as well. So similarly, Okay, uh, let's be honest. It's not just Apple. It's going to be Amazon. It's going to be Google. Okay, it's going to be uh, Facebook. Um, and what's the what's the last one? Do, it, do they have it all? Um, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, Google. Yeah, that, yeah. So those are the companies that we definitely have to look at the earnings, especially with what uh, Netflix put on us. So uh, chances are, honestly speaking, if uh, we're talking about traditional uh, tech companies, which is your other uh, the the left left over four fangs, um, they are definitely going to be hit the hardest. I do think that Google might have the least amount of threat, but in terms of the rest of them, they are all going to be um, hit the hardest because let's be honest, okay, Meta platforms. I explained uh, the shortcomings for Meta platforms, Facebook, okay, 
they are not really innovating as much and they are not really winning their competitors either. Okay, Amazon, same thing. They are not really being uh, innovative either. Um, and if anything, they are still proceeding as a lost leader as compared to what any other companies would actually be doing right now. Um, then afterwards, we have to talk about Apple. Okay, Apple, definitely, because supply chains in general is really affecting Apple, um, you know, and it's evident from all the articles as well. Okay, supply chains is affecting because uh, in China, all of them are really being affected. The chips manufacturing are being affected. Batteries are being affected. You know, nickel is being affected. A lot of them are actually being affected. So Apple, in terms of production-wise, they have to really scale down as well. So even for Apple, Apple is not starting to not look as much as the blue chip either. Okay, Fang, Fang used to be the blue chips of uh, tech. And clearly, you know, we are starting to see um, the reason why they are not. So uh, Apple, I think Apple is going to be an interesting one for us to really look at as well. Okay, so over here, you can see Apple spending um, so much money on lobbying for the first three months of 2022. So this is definitely going to be cash burn, okay? Uh, you know, they, are, they, have been, they have been lobbying for a lot of things, okay? Antitrust bills, okay? And of course, they have also been um, lobbying for all, these, uh, all the other, um, you know, with the App Store getting um, profit from... Um, other people, aka the Epic Games uh, saga. Um, also, of course, Apple is also getting other a whole brunt of things from Spotify as well because uh, they allow Spotify to not go through with um, the entire um, commission-based um, cut from App Store and such. So, of course, there's going to be a lot of issue. You know, the open app um, market um, act is also the antitrust measures that are being slapped on by the uh, Congress as well. Uh, so. Yeah, I do. I do think that uh, you know, and also let's not forget about the whole data data protection situation uh, that was happening in uh, end of twenty twenty two as well. Horrible. So I do think that you know, Apple is definitely having a lot uh, of tailwinds as compared to headwinds. So Apple is going to be a little bit uh, tougher for us to really look at. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully we do, you know, ultimately, I do not really want to be a bear either in such a market, um, you know, because if I continue to be such a bear in this market, uh, it's not going to be good overall either. So I do think that uh, it's better for us to uh, just get out of this and foster go to the moon, of course, you know, I want to be able to actively invest as well. Uh, yeah. anyway, that's all I have for today's news. A little bit longer than usual, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy this. Uh, stay tuned for tomorrow's uh, news because I'll be covering weekly trades. And uh, just to let you guys know, it's going to be quite an, quite a big one because uh, I actually did a huge uh, restructuring of my entire portfolio. Uh, so yes, just stay tuned for that. All right. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys.